call to worship. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. Decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let us pray together. As we look to the heavens, the stars shine forth to herald your respect. The, the warmth of your love, the vastness reminds us we cannot escape from your presence. You are above and beyond us, yet you choose to dwell with us. In Christ you promise you'll be with us whatever befalls us. You will strengthen us in whatever needs we may have. As your voice goes out through all the earth in your words to the ends of the world, may our voices resound now as we give you all thanks and praise. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if we say that we have no sin, we have deceived only ourselves, and there is no truth in our hearts. But if we confess our sins, then there is forgiveness to be found through Jesus Christ. Therefore, let us confess our sins as one body and in one voice. Let us pray. You whose voice extends to the ends of the world, have mercy upon us as we confess our sin. We live as enemies of the cross when we crave earthly things. Glory in the weakness of others, yearn above all for satisfaction for ourselves and serve only those gods who do what we want having attained the prize of your mercy in jesus help us to obey him as the source of new life amen As the gospel reminds us, the very stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Christ is our foundation. God's will in him cannot be shaken. Our redemption is sure. We are forgiven. Amen. Having received the peace of Christ, let us now share that peace among one another. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, and prepare our hearts to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that, hearing, we may also obey your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. from today it's called the parable of the tenants it's from Matthew chapter 21 beginning at verse 33 
I had some difficulty understanding this, so I read it twice and then I read it again. Maybe you listen carefully and then we'll see if the pastor can clarify it for us. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized the servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time, and the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, this is the heir, come. Let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretches to a wretched end, they replied, and he will rent the vineyard to other tenants who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read this scripture? The stone the builder rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruit. Anyone who fails on this stone be will be broken to pieces. Anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parables, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words in my lips the meditations of all of our hearts be ever acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the story for today, a landowner loans his land out to some tenants, expecting to be paid back by those tenants the fruit of the field. In other words, this is a story about repaying loans something that all of us are fairly familiar with. If we buy a house, we make a down payment and take out a loan for the remaining principal to be paid off, ideally in 10, 15, or 30 years, all the while paying a certain interest rate on top of the principal. If we buy a car, generally it's the same process, though it's a smaller down payment, and it's a different payoff period. Many students today for their undergraduate, graduate, and doctoral students have taken out student loans to pay for their education. We take out loans for other smaller things like home projects, new furniture and appliances, so on and so forth. As humans, we know all too well about repaying loans and settling debts. Well, how then do we repay God for what God loans to us? If we're honest, we acknowledge that our lives are not our own. We acknowledge God's ownership of our lives and they're being gifted to us by God through baptism, through confirmation, through affirmations of faith. In the same way, if we're honest, we acknowledge that our talents, our skills, are not our own either. The Bible refers to them as gifts of the Spirit, as virtues and abilities gifted to us by God through the Holy Spirit. So as Christians, we must acknowledge that our lives, our gifts, nothing that we have is truly ours. In a manner of speaking, it is all on loan to us from God. So. How then do we repay these loans? The short answer, 
We repay these loans by using them in a manner befitting of being a child of God. In today's reading, the landowner loans his land to the tenants that they might use the land and produce fruits of their labors. In a similar fashion, in the parable of the talents, which will come up in a couple of weeks, the master loans his servants talents with the expectation that they will pay him back more than what they are initially given. Therefore, with the loan of life, we pay it back by using it. We dedicate our lives not just in word, but in deed, to serve the triune God and do as God commands. We dedicate our lives to do justice, to love mercy, to walk humbly with our God. We live a life that honors Christ's sacrifice for us and the teaching that Christ gave us in his life. Similarly, we repay the loan that is the gifts of the Spirit also by using them. To each of us has been given unique talents and skills. I cannot fix a leaky faucet and a, or a cracked pipe to save my own life. But I know who among this congregation I can call on if an issue like that should arise. Not everyone has the organizational skills that our treasurer, our clerk of session, our elders have. And that's why we are truly blessed to have those people among us. Not everyone has the patience to tackle the task of finding a new pastor and serve on the pastor nominating committee when the pulpit is empty or soon to be empty. And that's why this church has been truly blessed by those who served on the pastor nominating committee. No two people have the same talents. But in recognizing our talents, we pay back this loan by using them for furthering God's kingdom. However, you might be wondering, this is yet to mention anything about interest rates. What kind of interest rate would God put on his loans to us? Very few loans have no interest rate, at least beyond 12 to 24 months of the initial pay period. All of us here have been alive longer than that. Therefore, we can rightfully assume that there is interest to pay on our loans now. So what is the interest rate and how do we pay it? The interest is the money given through donations and offerings. That might sound a little odd, given that God doesn't have pockets. He doesn't have a wallet. He doesn't have a bank account. Nor is he ever really in need or want of anything that money would be an issue. He spoke all of creation into being. He didn't pay for it. He doesn't need money. However, there is still an interest rate to be paid on our loans. At the moment, the session is discussing next year's budget and trying to figure out what we would need to bring in for the sake of not only keeping the doors open, but also continuing to do God's work in the community. Along with that comes the stewardship season. While we may not be doing a stewardship dinner this year for obvious reasons, there is still a pledge drive going on. This money that we all pledge to the general fund, to special projects, to other areas of the church are the fruits of our loans. The talents we have serve us in making money while we are working and building up retirement accounts that we can continue to withdraw money from after retirement. The life that God loans to us allows us the time to accrue more money than if that time were shortened. Therefore, given that the money we make is a fruit of our labors and results from the loans that God gives to us, these fruits belong to God as well, just as the grapes in the vineyard in the story belong to the owner, not the tenants. Be warned, though. Just, er, don't be on myself. With such a grand loan comes grand expectations. 
just as there is a way to repay these loans, there is a way to default on them as well. The tenants in the story for today defaulted on their loan. They thought that they could keep the land for themselves, even going so far as to kill the heir to the estate in the hopes that they would be made the heirs themselves. In a similar fashion, the one servant in the parable of the talents who buries his talent and just settles his debt, he is reprimanded. He is called a lazy, wicked servant. Now, while none of us here ideally want to default on our loan, it's very easy to do. God has given us our very lives, claiming that this life is ours, that we can do with it whatever we please. These are both means of defaulting on that loan. God gives us gifts of the Spirit to further his work in the world. Therefore, if we squander these gifts, we don't use them. We use them for fulfilling our own purposes and not God's purpose. If we don't use them in a manner becoming of the title children of God, we are defaulting on this loan. This parable even goes so far as to give a warning to those who are like the wicked tenants. Jesus says, therefore I tell you the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produce the fruits of the kingdom. We see this reflected in the parable of the talents as well. The talent that was given to the lazy, wicked servant was given to the one who was initially given five, but returns ten to the master. In other words, if the talents we are given are squandered, if the life we are given is taken for granted, those expectations of what we could have accomplished will be placed on others to bear the load. It will be given to someone else who will use those talents for the good of God's kingdom. Now, I do not give you all this warning because I feel that anyone here is actually in danger of defaulting on their loans or is unable to pay the interest rate. Far from it. I look around here and I see a vast group of people who are doing exactly as God would have us do, if not more. To the best of our abilities, we are living our lives according to Christ's teachings. To the best of our abilities, we are making the most of our gifts of the Spirit. Make no mistake, though. Just as our lives and our talents are on loan to us, so too is every new day that we see. And with every new day, we all have a decision to make. To continue to repay these loans in kind, or to default on them. Which will you choose for yourself? Let us pray. Almighty God, you bless us with more than we know. Our salvation, our talents, our very lives all come from you. And for that, we cannot lift up enough thanksgivings. We pray that what you give to us, we may in turn make good use of, that your kingdom may be furthered and your love known to all the ends of the earth. Help us to live according to your commandments and teachings, and help us to honor our title as children of God. This we lift up to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.